Anand is a freelance writer, basically somebody who likes to learn and transmit knowledge because knowledge is better than information. Uh, but Anand is a neuroscientist, uh, also very proficient in Sanskrit and French. Um, and he worked for one year in France, teaching uh, French people English. Um, he also uh, is very proficient in translating from Sanskrit to English, English to Sanskrit, English to Hindi, Hindi to English, English to um, Telugu, Telugu to English, Fran French to English, English to French. And uh, he's a neuroscientist. Yeah, what can we say? Um, autism is an umbrella term. The autistic spectrum encompasses a range of cognitive and behavioral combinations contiguously varying in intensity and manifestation. Thus, no two autistic individuals are the same. I would probably consider my first success in life as the point where I recognized my failure in fitting in. For many autistic individuals, a lot of energy can be spent in day-to-day -day survival. I have never understood what it means to take it easy, for example. My autism journey has majorly been devoted to discovering the complications of being simple and understanding the intersection of autism and trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder. So today, Anand is going to give us insights into what is uh, trauma and anxiety neurologically and how trauma shows up very differently in autistic people and why it is very important to know this difference um, in the context of autism. Thank you so much. Uh, it's up to you. It's over to you, Anand. Yeah, but feel free to uh, ask me any questions, okay? Uh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I'm supposed to ask you questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, not supposed to ask me, but whatever comes to your mind, please feel to uh, yeah. feel free to put it across, okay? Yeah. So, yes. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, this is not going to be a comprehensive presentation on autism. I mean, uh, and I mean, uh, and the intersection between autism and trauma because that's like an altogether different research domain, which I find is going to be impossible to cover in ten minutes. Uh, so nonetheless, uh, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and uh, talk about my autism journey and why I identify with uh, uh, why, why this particular field is of interest to me. So uh, as many of my speakers, as many of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the speakers in this forum have already pointed out, uh, there are, I, all, I identify with many of uh, the, uh, the, the, the traits. That, that that are characteristic uh, of being in the autism spectrum conditions, and given that uh, I got my diagnosis very recently, um, uh, I um, I can really really identify. Uh, I can really resonate with uh, uh, many of the experiences that many people have gone through uh, that have been shared on this forum. So. What happens here is uh, before I mean so I'm going my focus is going to be on on how to how to develop a perspective. So this is not a this, I'm just going to try and introduce a perspective. Uh, this is a, a, which which would be many of uh, a plethora of other perspectives in dealing with uh, trauma and autism. So for for us to understand the perspective, I'm going just going to use this particular concept as a reference point. So that we can build on this perspective, starting out from this reference, reference point. So that the, the, the concept is called the triune brain. Tri means three, and un both, uh, and un means one. Both essentially are Latin-derived Latin terms. So the concept is thinking of a brain having three different, three uh, functional uh, parts. So let me. I mean, this is. Uh, well, I personally believe in a. I, I mean, I do. I do not like to classify too much and assign uh, uh, parts, functional parts, to the brain because uh, uh, neuroscience is getting uh, neuroscience essentially uh, is evolving to a stage wherein we are looking at a holistic and a connectome-based approach, wherein the entire brain functions as a single unit. But for this particular uh, uh, for this particular talk, I just wanted to talk about. 
how these functional classifications can help understand uh, trauma, especially from uh, an evolutionary uh, perspective. So let's say that we are talking about, uh, let, if I were to say that the human brain evolved from bottom to top, the top being most evolved, uh, we could start with the reptilian brain. So a reptilian brain, essentially, what, what does it do? I really do not have to think about breathing, for example. I really do not have to, I do not have to uh, say, uh, decipher my feelings of hunger or thirst, because these essentially, these are processes that happen, uh, that the brain takes care of unconsciously. We really do not need to put uh, any, kinds of, any kind of conscious thought. Uh, and the, the next part is the limbic system, uh, uh, which essentially uh, looks, uh, which essentially may, is majorly involved in the emotional processing and in in uh, in emotional responses and reactions majorly. So this is the limbic brain, which essentially represents the next stage of uh, uh, quote unquote uh, the evolution uh, that we are talking about. And finally, the neocortex, the rational or thinking brain. So for me, let's say that I'm using my neocortex or my thinking brain to essentially give this talk because I really have to collate and draw uh, information or uh, draw information from various sources that I gathered with the help of my memory and ultimately have to uh, make sure that they all are coherent logically and then deliver an output. So for me, the neocortex essentially is uh, crucial for me to give this talk. So this is the trine brain, wherein you have the basic brain, and then you have the emotional brain and the cortex brain. What is going to happen in trauma is that this, this equation, uh, this uh, so all these uh, processes, all these functional uh, parts have to work in synchrony. But when the synchrony is disturbed in a certain way to a certain event, uh, wherein the limbic brain takes predominance over the other, uh, takes predominance over the rational or thinking brain is when uh, we are talking about uh, problems, uh, especially in the case of trauma. What is trauma? Trauma simply is a threat which overwhelms an individual's adaptive and internal and external coping mechanism. Uh, so a traumatic event is not an un is, is is obviously unpleasant, but uh, it 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 overwhelms one's management, one's one's coping mechanism. So when that happens, uh, it is not easy for anybody uh, to go back to base levels. So when the when trauma is chronic, or when a certain type of trauma is not resolved, or when when certain traumatic events do not get closure. Uh, do not get closure, uh, it could lead to something known as uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. Uh, one minute. Yeah. So, for example, uh, when we are talking about, uh, so the, the certain factors that contribute to post-traumatic stress disorder, are uh, like the ones that I mentioned here in this chart. So now PTSD occurs, uh, I mean, uh, in all populations. It's, I mean, this is, this is essentially a very redundant statement to make, but what I'm trying to say is uh, what we, uh, well, PTSD can occur to anybody, but the kind, but the, our neurological makeup essentially decides a lot about, essentially contributes significantly to, uh, to uh, uh, contribute significantly to, uh, to process the, the traumatic event or to, to essentially cate uh, to essentially um, categorize, not categorize, I'd say, but uh, the, the, the neural setup essentially uh, is, is a significant contributor to how, to what severity uh, is the post-traumatic stress disorder. So, so now, when we are, uh, so let's say that we have a soldier who goes to war. Uh, we essentially, uh, the, the, and uh, because of uh, the traumatic experiences that uh, can occur to the person related to war, uh, it, 
uh, this uh, the person can uh, develop something, uh, develop PTSD because of the traumatic event, which is war. So the this is essentially an acute traumatic event which can result in post-traumatic stress disorder. But when cases, are, when we have certain cases like chronic trauma, wherein there is repeated abuse or where there's a repeated traumatic pattern, the PTSD that is manifested in such individuals is different and it requires special attention and most importantly, special care. Such, uh, disorder, such, uh, 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 such a trauma, uh, such a manifestation would would is called complex PTSD, which again is complex because it is different in different uh, people. So uh, this is one thing that I'd like to clarify is that uh, it, uh, this is not a general blanket uh, presentation that, that looks at everybody, no. We essentially uh, have to look at each case individually for the kind of uh, 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 experiences that the person might have gone through. Now, what happens in PTSD, essentially, to put it put, to put it in a very concise manner, is that uh, when people relive the experiences, uh, the when the people relive the unpleasant experiences, when the traumatic memories keep haunting them, they are. It would be safe to say that the rational input that uh, which would probably say that the traumatic event has gone, uh, ha is over, is diluted or attenuated to essentially give predominance to the limbic system. This is something that one would call a limbic hijack, wherein the emotional brain takes predominance over the rational brain. So this uh, is a very characteristic feature of PTSD, wherein the limbic system is on an overdrive. This, the, the, this can happen, which when, when, when such, uh, uh, so when, when the limbic system goes on an overdrive for a really, really long time due to, uh, due to traumatic events, uh, we could call it complex PTSD, which could happen in autistic as well as non-autistic individuals. Now, again, this is just one perspective about trauma processing in autism. So trauma is different in autism es essentially because uh, what I would like to use is a concept about uh, systemizing, essentially, uh, which I identify with. I'm not saying that everybody on the autistic spectrum should identify with it. No, I'm not saying that. But there is, uh, there is an, uh, so the, the, for a systemizing brain uh, that, uh, that can be a characteristic of many people uh, on the autistic spectrum, a traumatic event is an immense violation of the system of their emotional security of or uh, the, the 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 kind of uh, uh, the, the the kind of uh, uh, maybe it could be a life changing life altering event so it could be a major uh, major uh, change that that uh, that uh, that is immense so that it it process it the system essentially has been shattered so for an autistic individual such violation of the system can essentially cause uh, can cause higher likelihood of somebody on the autistic spectrum uh, to develop post traumatic stress disorder but what happens in many cases which is something that uh, needs to be looked at in more detail is that the given that uh, many autistic uh, individuals go through traumatic events because of the of not the condition. No, I'm not saying that they uh, they go traumatic. Uh, they go through traumatic events because of the condition. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm trying to say is that they essentially the the, the an uh, an unfavorable environment, an unfavorable environment, or unfavorable group of uh, maybe uh, like uh, 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 an unfavorable uh, uh, environment or non-conducive ambience can cause uh, uh, somebody who is on the autistic spectrum to suffer traumatic experiences. So in many cases, it has been seen because of maybe uh, in, uh, uh, instances of childhood neglect or adverse childhood events, uh, one should definitely look at higher incidences of complex PTSD in an autistic individual. Because when the trauma becomes chronic, 
you know, there is higher likelihood of PTSD to develop into complex PTSD. And it is essentially putting two and two together. Autistic individuals are at a higher likelihood of going through chroma chronic traumatic events. This is the logic that I'm trying to drive across. Hope everybody is with me. So if, why, if we look at the difference between PTSD and complex PTSD, there are three common symptoms that we can all see, a sense of threat, avoidance, and re-experiencing. But when the trauma is chronic, we have additional symptoms of complex PTSD, such as affect dysregulation, which is an impaired ability to regulate negative emotions, and a negative self-concept, which I know for myself that I have struggled with. And then, in, and obviously, interpersonal disturbances, which which is again a characteristic of uh, which could which could which can be seen in many people across the autistic spectrum. So, what well, this is this slide essentially my uh, I added this slide in the goal to go to uh, to essentially stress the point that, that there are unique symptoms for uh, people uh, uh, with Asperger's syndrome or. Now we know that uh, Asperger's syndrome again falls under the purview of autism spectrum conditions. So uh, I'm uh, I'm just going to say that I go ahead and say that there are uh, these are certain uh, symptoms that are uh, uh, that 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 these are certain traits that essentially are characteristics of Asperger's, and there are also unique symptoms for complex PTSD. But what happens is the there are there's it is, it is very, very important for us to investigate the co-occurrence of this left side panel as well as the right side panel in somebody along the autistic spectrum. That is the most important point. So uh, this is essentially what I would like to convey is that, uh, aut well, even it is, it is hetero, or let's, let's just say that autism is heterogeneous even within the autistic population because no two autistic individuals are same. So I'm not saying that the perspective that I put, put across is, uh, I, I'm not, I, I would never say that the perspective that I'm trying to put across is going to apply to the entire spectrum, no. But this is a possibility that needs to be investigated uh, more. So, uh, to give a small summary, a non-conducive societal environment uh, can cause repeated traumatic events. And we know when the trauma is repetitive and chronic, PTSD has a higher likelihood of manifesting itself as complex PTSD. So you have an autism, autistic neural setup, which essentially causes the difference in trauma, trauma processing and to couple the, to to add uh, to, to to essentially uh, uh, to add to that we have a chronic nature of traumatic events so uh, the conclusion would be some people uh, along the autistic in the autistic spectrum are likely to have a very high chance of developing complex ptsd and this is important for uh, caregivers and therapists to address uh, and investigate in order to elucidate uh, and better help people uh, to process their traumatic events on the autistic spectrum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anand. We have uh, come to the end of this, but we're going to, all our presentations are done, but uh, we have a couple of questions in the chat box. Pandana, can you take them on one by one? Sure. So uh, the first question that I've been holding on to for a while was addressed to Lim by Mary Barua, who says that Lim mentioned being homeschooled. Mary is curious about that. Uh, Lim? Yes, I have given access to Lim. Lim, you can unmute yourself now. So, uh, 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 okay, uh, uh, I, uh, I mean, um, if I may address, there are uh, one minute. Uh, I think uh, a little behind on the chat box. Uh, so, so where, where should I? Uh, 
one minute where it's okay uh, Sorry, will your questions. questions yeah. yeah so for anand there were uh, multiple questions do you want me to list them all at once or one no. by one one by one uh, if it's if not a problem sure, because it'll be easier that. for me to uh, process them right so the first question was by me and i had asked the i said that i would love to hear any insights you might have about complex ptsd diagnosis for autistics in india uh it's a very uh, so uh, i mean uh, i could be wrong on this but what i would try to what i what i would what i'm likely to think is that uh, complex ptsd is a very very recently uh, discovered condition and uh, and in fact uh, uh, it has it, it is a condition that has been majorly associated with childhood neglect and that could be autistic children or non autistic children so that was one uh, so uh, that 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 was how it was that was how the, the the entire concept of complex ptsd came into uh, being and uh, so autism uh, cptsd and autism uh if i were to let's say that if i went to went into uh, databases about uh, uh, uh like pubmed or uh, uh, uh your uh, uh, other databases that the uh, that 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 the, that essentially collate research articles from all over the the number of studies that have been look that have addressed this issue are very very few i probably uh, i probably couldn't even though we have looked at autism and trauma that has been looked at extensively yeah but autism and complex ptsd is a topic that demands a lot of research for us to even develop a therapeutic approach and a diagnostic approach so we have a lot of work to do on that front actually thank you that was good to hear it's making me think 